Romans chapter number 8. This is a tremendous chapter. Uh, certainly one of the uh, hallmark chapters for believers in the New Testament. There's so much we can glean from in this chapter. Begin in verse number 1. I'm glad there's now no condemnation to them. Walk after the Spirit. Amen. I'm glad God don't hold my sin against me. I'm glad when He forgives it, it's gone. What a blessing. Too many God's people walking around on their lower lip worried about things God's delivered them from. I'm glad there's no condemnation. I'm glad He doesn't hold it against me. So why should I hold it against me? And there's so many wonderful things in this chapter. In this chapter, we have given the privilege to call Him Abba Father. That shows that intimate relationship we have with God. I'm glad it shows we're a joint heir to the throne of Christ. I'm glad it tells us that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. What a chapter this chapter uh, says, If God be for us, who can be against us? I mean, this chapter is just loaded with victory, and with hope, and with strength. In this chapter you find uh, in verse number 26 that the Spirit of God is for us. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us. He's for us. I'm glad He leads us, He directs us, He enlightens us, and He's for us. We find in this great chapter that the Father's for us. Look at verse 31. What shall, we say, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? I'm glad the Holy Ghost is for us. I'm glad the Father's for us. This chapter reveals the Son is for us. Look at verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who, loveth, who also maketh intercession for us. So I'm glad the Godhead is for us today. Amen. Friends, if you get that down in the gate when you're sold that God is for you, yeah. nothing you ever face will overcome you. Amen. I want to begin reading verse 35. And that's the first message, and that's not even in my notes. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Verse 35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, and all these things... We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus right. our Lord. Brother Doug Harold, will you pray for us and ask God's blessing on the reading of the Word of God? Father, we you yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Mm. 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 Amen. Thank you, Brother Doug. I want you to notice three things as a way of introduction. I want you to notice, first of all, what is asked by the Apostle Paul. Verse 35, he says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Can I say, throughout the history of the church, believers have faced tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, and sword. Many of you today may have faced some of those things. The question is asked, shall those things separate us from the love of Christ. Notice, if you will, the answer. Verse number 37. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. 
hallelujah to God, that those things which we face or may face or have faced or may continue to face, uh, those things cannot separate us uh, from the love of Christ. Uh, I'm glad he said he's loved us with an everlasting love. Uh, and I'm glad he said that nothing you will come in contact with, uh, nothing you will come against, uh, nothing that will befall you will separate you from his marvelous, amazing love. And then I want you to notice the assurance. Look with me in verse 38. The Bible says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus uh, our Lord. Uh, not only can those things not uh, separate us from the love of Christ, but, but he goes on to say that there's nothing uh, from the spiritual world to the physical world uh, that can separate us uh, from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus uh, our Lord. Uh, I'm interested today in that word... Uh, in verse number 38. That word persuaded. The Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Ghost of God, pinned down this uh, uh, wonderful letter, and in this chapter, and in this verse, he's inspired to write, write the word persuaded. That word persuaded, or persuade, means to influence. It means to urge. And it means to convince. Paul said, I am convinced. Paul was stoned. Paul was beaten with stripes. Uh, Paul was imprisoned. Uh, Paul was left for dead. Uh, Paul faced all those things. Uh, Paul faced uh, hell uh, itself. Uh, and Paul said, uh, I'm convinced that no matter what is thrown at me, it cannot separate me from the love of God. Uh, and can I say the Bible deals with this word persuade? Sometimes in the vernacular to influence folks. Sometimes to urge folks. Uh, and other times to convince folks. Uh, the Bible says in Acts 13, 43, Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, uh, who speaking to them persuading, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Hallelujah, when there's been times you wanted to throw in the towel, uh, when there was times you wanted to quit, uh, when there was times you didn't feel worthy, uh, when there was times you just wanted to give up. Uh, thanks be unto God. Uh, God sent a message. Uh, God sent a preacher. Uh, God gave you a verse uh, that convinced you uh, to continue on in the grace of God. Uh, can I say the Bible says in Acts 18 4, and he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews uh, and the Greeks. Uh, 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 how many times did you come to church uh, and heard the word of God and left out lost uh, but you kept coming back uh, and the man of God kept preaching uh, and kept preaching uh, and kept preaching uh, and one day the light turned on in your soul uh, and you realized you needed God uh, and he persuaded you to put your faith in Christ. Uh, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.11, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Why do you tell sinners that there's a hell? Why do you tell sinners uh, about the blood of Christ? Why do you tell sinners? Why do you keep telling them? Why do you keep telling them? Uh, why do you keep telling them? Because you want to persuade them. They don't want to die and go to hell because of the terror of the Lord. Uh, I'm glad, hallelujah, being saved. We're saved from the wrath of God. But those who reject Christ are going to have to face the wrath of God forever in hell. The Bible makes it clear in 2 Timothy chapter number 1, the Apostle Paul says, For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. For I know in whom I believed and am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against this Amen. day, that day. The Apostle Paul had faced everything. He was persuaded God was going to go with him all the way. But unfortunately, we have that horrible, terrible verse that hurts every preacher. When they hear what Paul heard after he preached to Agrippa in Acts 26, 28. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. 
You may be here today and you're almost persuaded. Can I say Agrippa is in the pits of hell today and that verse rings in his ear over and over and over and over again. Almost I became a Christian. Almost I didn't have to suffer this fate. Almost I didn't have to deal with this torment. But almost isn't close enough, friend. I'm going to preach with God's help on this thought. I'm going to preach on some things you'd better be persuaded of. Some things you'd better be persuaded of. There's a lot of things in this world that really don't matter. Most of the things that trip people up 100 years from now isn't going to matter at all. But there are some things you better be persuaded of. There are some things you better be convinced of. There are some things uh, that have better have influenced you enough to where you put faith in Jesus Christ. There are some things you better be persuaded of. Can I say, first of all, you better be persuaded of the Savior. Hmm? There is a Savior today. His name is Jesus Christ. Uh, you better be persuaded of His personification. He was just not a good teacher. He was just not a religious man. He was just not a, a religious leader. Uh, uh, friend, you better be persuaded of that he was the Son of God. Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, hey, there was never a time he wasn't. Uh, he is the darling Son of God. Uh, and the darling Son of God left heaven to become the Savior. Uh, you better be persuaded not only of his personification, uh, but of his purpose. Uh, why did he come? Jackie. He came because you was lost on your way to hell. And he came seeking to save that which was lost. He came into this world to go to an old rugged cross. He was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. He came to fulfill the law, Clint, because you couldn't keep it. You couldn't fulfill it. You couldn't be holy in God's eyes. But he was. And he came. And he kept the law. And he carried that wood cross uh, to Calvary uh, and he nailed it was nailed to the cross uh, and doing some he nailed brother Doug all the ordinances and all the offenses uh, that you could have ever broken uh, every sin Miss Melissa you could have ever done uh, or all mankind could have done uh, he was it was nailed to him on the cross uh, he became your sacrifice uh, my sacrifice uh, he came to die uh, and he died on Calvary uh, was buried Buried and rose again according to the scriptures. You better be persuaded of the Savior today. You better be persuaded of his position. He's not the man upstairs. He's not your buddy. He is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And every knee is going to bow before him someday. And every tongue will confess someday uh, that he is Lord. And you better be persuaded of that. Uh, Amen. You better be persuaded of the Savior. It don't matter who's in the White House. It don't matter who's in the governor's mansion. It don't matter in those 100 years from now, it ain't going to matter. Who was the governor of Kentucky 100 years ago? You don't know, neither do I. But 100 years from now, Jesus is going to matter. You better be persuaded of that. Can I say this? You better be persuaded of salvation. Sure. Mm. It is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. Friend, you're going to die. You better not die. Go out of this world the way you came in. You came in this world. You was born into this world. You was conceived in sin. And in iniquity did your mother bring you forth. You were a sinner by birth. You were a sinner by practice. A sinner by nature. You're a sinner. Amen. But I got good news. The Savior came Amen. to save you from your sin. Yep, right. Can I say the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, in order to be saved, you've got to realize you're lost. There's none that do it good. No, not one. Right. Hmm? The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, you better be persuaded of whether or not you're saved. Mm, that's good. Mm. Well, Mike, you can't hope to get to go to heaven. But you can go to heaven. Right. Right. Mm. Uh, 
Listen, you plan a trip. You contact how you're going to get there. You're going to drive or you're going to fly. You get that all settled. You know where you're going to stay ahead of time. You know what you're going to do, some of the sightseeing when you go. you got all that lined out. But the trip of all trips, the trip of eternity, a lot of you don't give a second thought about. Amen. Well, let me help you something. I'm persuaded of my salvation. Amen. Third Saturday night of March 1974, I trusted Christ as Lord Amen. and Savior. He saved me that night at the Afton Baptist Church. I was there when it happened. I know what happened. Huh? And can I say hallelujah? Uh, my trip's been paid for. Hey, I'm going to heaven by the grave or by flight one way or the other, but I'm a-going. Hallelujah. I've got a mansion over there. Hey, I've got family over there. I've got the Savior over there. It's all settled. My sins have been washed in the blood of Christ. I've been made a new creature in Christ. I've been robed in His righteousness, justified by faith. I'm persuaded of that because I've done what the Bible said. Now what the Bible says happens in salvation. Huh? Praise the Lord. I'm persuaded of my salvation. Are you? Is what you trust in going to take you to heaven? If it's not the blood of Christ, you're not going to make it, friend. Baptism won't take you to heaven. Huh? Church membership won't take you to heaven. Mm -mm. Being a good moral person won't take you to heaven. Putting money in the offering plate won't take you to heaven. Doing works and helping out your neighbor won't take you to heaven. The only thing that takes you to heaven is Jesus. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Have you met the Master? Is He your Savior? You better be persuaded of that. If not, all that we read in those verses doesn't apply to you. Hmm. You're not under the love of Christ. You're under the wrath of God. Amen. What lost people don't understand, Brother Clint, they're the enemy of God. There's enmity between them and God. And the only hope for them is Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'm persuaded of the Savior. Are you? I'm persuaded of salvation. You need to be persuaded of the Scriptures. The Bible's just not some archaic book. The, the Bible is not a book that contains the Word of God. I'm talking about the real Bible is the Word of God. It is God-breathed. It is inerrant. It means it doesn't have any errors in it. It's without fault. It's without blemish. Why? God wrote it. That's why. Hmm? You said man wrote it. Man was just the instrument or the pen that God used to pen it down with. God wrote it. You open up your front cover. If yours has a copyright, it's not God's Word. Amen. Hmm. God gave one book to English-speaking people that was His Word. Hmm. Psalms chapter 12, verse 6 says, As, uh, 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 as silver is tried in the furnace of verse, purified seven times, uh, 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 so is the Word of God. Hmm. It's come through seven major language translations. The seventh one was your King James Bible. You better be convinced of that. Why? So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. The Bible says over in Peter, we're begotten by an incorruptible seed. If you got the wrong one, then you trust in the wrong Savior, the wrong God. I'm glad I'm persuaded of the book, the Scriptures. I don't believe that... They're just stories. I believe they're real events. Hmm? I believe every jot and tittle. There's a lot I don't understand, but I believe it because God penned it down. The Bible says through the Word of God, we know that God framed the worlds. You know why this world believes in evolution? They don't believe the book. They're not persuaded of the Scriptures. If they just get in the book and start believing the book and start believing the Savior and start getting uh, uh, saved, you know what will happen? They'll junk evolution. Hmm? True scientists prove the Bible. You know, they skip science to prove evolution. It's still a theory because it's not true. I'm persuaded in the Scriptures. I'm persuaded in the Scriptures I have everlasting life. I'm persuaded in the Scriptures that my God is able to deliver me. I'm persuaded in the Scriptures everything that I stand on because what I stand on is based on the Scriptures. Are you persuading the Scriptures? I'm talking about some things that you better be persuaded on. 
The Bible said in the last days there'd be a famine for the uh, hearing of the word of God. The Bible says in the last days they'd heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. The Bible said in the last days they'd be carried about, tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Why do you think about every three or four years they'll come up with some kind of new so-called Christian movement? Because they need some kind of humanistic philosophy to get people's attention. I've found for over 40 years that book gets my attention. Whether I'm right, wrong, or indifferent, that book knows how to take care of me. Hmm? You better be persuaded of the Scriptures. Can I say this? Uh, I'm persuaded of the sanctuary. Hmm? The sanctuary is important to God. Matter of fact, he took Moses up on the mountain and gave him a blueprint of what the church should be. And can I say the sanctuary is very important. Every aspect of the sanctuary is important. It's dedicated to God. It's been hallowed to His name. It is a place where we are to come and worship Him in spirit and in truth. You better be persuaded of its membership. It's important to be a member of a local New Testament church. It's important to be a part of of God's work. It's important uh, uh, to be a part. I mean, if Americans Express members have privileges, what do you think God's church has? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a blessing to be a member of a good church. Amen. I don't care who you are, you're going to need God's people at some point in your life. Right. And I have found no matter where I go, if you find a good local church, you'll find folks that care about you and that'll help you. I thank God for God's godly people. What a blessing. Hmm? I'm not only persuaded the importance of its membership, but the importance of its meaning. This is a place where we're to come out from the world and assemble ourselves amongst our kind to give reverence and homage due to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our worship. And this is not service. This is worship. We come to celebrate Him, and that He's not in the grave, that He is our Savior, and that He is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. But you also need to be persuaded of the mission of the church. God gave the church to be a witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other most parts of the world. The mission of the church is to get the gospel out in our Jerusalem, Florence, Judea, Hebron, Burlington, Union, all these places around us, Samaria, the utmost parts of the world. Why do you think we support all the missionaries we support? Because they can take the gospel where we can't go. It's the mission of the church. Never lose sight. Jesus came seeking to save that which was lost. He was the first missionary left heaven came here to save us. It's our responsibility to get the gospel across the world so others can hear the good news of Jesus Christ. I'm persuaded of service you, need to be, you better be persuaded of your service service is very important if God didn't have anything for us to do he'd take us to heaven when he saved us Amen. but he left us here to serve can I say our service is to be reasonable hmm? Romans 12 1 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service God don't want you to die for him he wants you to live for him Amen. he wants you to live a life that is holy and acceptable unto God uh oh right. brother Josh he didn't say live a life that pleases you he said live a life that pleases him our service ought to not be contingent or based upon if I'm better than somebody else sitting on a pew in church my service has to be pleasing unto God. Amen. And he said, and that is reasonable. Hmm. Ah, kind of hit a thorn right there. Hit a nerve. So you know what I've learned over the years? When you hit a nerve, hit it good. Huh? Listen, only thing that's going to matter, Brother Brian, 100 years from now is what you did for Jesus Christ. Now, is your service pleasing to God? That's all that matters, because you're going to be judged on that. How's your service? See, my service isn't based on what she does. Amen. Is it reasonable 
for me to serve God. Absolutely. Look what he did for me. He died for me. Amen. He wants me to live for him. Amen. He loved me. He wants me to love him back. Right. He made sure somebody told me about the gospel. He wants me to tell somebody else about the gospel. That's reasonable. Our service is not only be reasonable, it's be reliable. Sure. God ought to be able to count on you. We like them verses, he's a friend that sticketh closer to the brother. We like those verses, he neither slumbers nor sleeps. We like those verses, call unto me and I'll answer thee and show thee great mighty things which thou knowest not. We love God being accountable. Our service needs to be reliable to God. Can I help you with something? We can't count on one another sometimes, let alone God count on us. How reliable are you? Let me just ask you this. Are we as faithful to God as we are our job? Say, Brother Doug, I need to work so I can put, pay my bills and put food on my table. Amen. I say, yeah. The Bible says you don't work, you shouldn't eat. But your job shouldn't be your God. You ought to be as reliable to God as you are your job. Are you as reliable to God as you are to your family? Husbands love their wives. Wives love their husbands. Children obey their parents. I mean, that's all the book. I say amen. Yep. Amen. But are you that reliable to God? Amen, I got a message outlined. God won't let me preach it. I'm just going to give you the title. Let me find somebody and pick. Let me find Peter. Where you at, brother Peter? This is a curse of being tall, brother. You stick out in the crowd, huh? Here's the title of my message that God won't let me preach. Blood is thicker than the Bible. It's amazing that what we'll do and how much we'll miss God, miss the thing for our family. But we don't want the Bible to miss us. Amen. Blood is thicker than the Bible. It's amazing what God says, and it's amazing how we, do, we ignore it for family. Amen. Hmm. God says in our service we need to be reasonable. We need to be reliable. And can I say this? We need to be responsible. Because right. we're responsible to God and to man. Ezekiel tells us that we'll be a watchman and a workman or the blood of those we do not wit witness to will be required at our hands. Amen. You're going to be responsible to all those around you whether or not you've been a faithful witness before them. Yep. You say, preacher, I've told them about Jesus, but have you lived like Jesus before them? Dangerous stuff. You better be persuaded of your service. You know, I'm getting old. I know some of you don't believe that. I'm sitting there looking right at 60 now. You say, that's not old. It is when you're 56. 60 is old. Huh? You know what I've learned, Brother James? You only got one shot to live life. Man, Michael Jackson, if we could go back when we was young and not do some of them dumb things we did when we was young, that's why we can't walk today. Hmm? Uh, we only get one shot to live life. I got news for you. You only get one shot to live your Christian life. Well, oh, I'm glad the mercies of God are renewed every day, and I'm glad He, if we confess our sin, He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But can I say there are some deeds that are not undone. We need to be persuaded of our service. I said, Brother Doug, I've not been a good service. I've got good news. You can, you can be a good servant starting today. That's right. Then I thought about this. You need to be persuaded of His soon coming, the soon coming Christ. That's right. Friend, you look around this world, and I mean, unless you got, you're an ostrich with your head buried in the sand, if you look around, you can tell this world's about to just go chaotic. I have never seen in my lifetime some of the idiotic, crazy things that are going on in this world like they are now. And can I say, 2 Timothy 3 tells us all those things would come to pass in the last days. Perilous times shall come. 
Everything in the Bible points to the fact that Jesus is coming soon. The next great prophetical event in Scripture is the Lord taking His church out of here. And then the great tribulation period taking hold. Can I say everything from Hollywood, everything in the media, everything going on around the world is setting up for the Antichrist to show up. And friends, I believe He's probably already on the earth. And you and I need to be persuaded. Time is short. If you're persuaded of that, you'll be a great servant. You'll be a great witness. You'll be involved in the things of Christ. And you'll let folks know about Jesus. And if you're persuaded He's coming soon, if you're lost, you'll get saved. Because He is coming soon. I'm persuaded of that. Hey, there's nothing more heart-wrenching than going to a funeral. Watching a loved one pass away. We've had several here in the church have loved ones pass away recently. But there's hope for a Christian. You may not go by the grave. Trumpet may sound. Shout of the archangel. The Lord say, come up hither. Guess what? We're out of here. What a blessing. That's our blessed hope. Huh? I know death has lost its sting for a Christian, but I'd just soon go by the rapture. Hmm? Huh? And that could happen today. We're that close. I'm persuaded of that. Now let me ask you this, friend. What are you persuaded of? Are you persuaded that Jesus is the Son of God, the Savior? Are you persuaded? Are you convinced? Do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have eternal life, that you've been saved from your sin? See, if you don't know those two things, nothing else really matters. If you're not saved today, my dear friends, why don't you make today the day? The Bible says, harden not your heart as in the day of provocation. Today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. You don't know if you got tomorrow, friend. But you got right now. Even if you had tomorrow in this world, you don't know that Jesus isn't coming back today. You better be persuaded. You better be convinced. You better be in Christ. Might be the last time you get to come and trust in Christ. If you're here today and you're saved, what kind of servant are you? How much are you concerned about other people dying and going to hell? How concerned are you about being a good steward of the things God has blessed you with? God's given you the gift of joy. Why don't you spread joy in this world? The world sure could use it. God's given you the gift of, uh, of an intellect. Why don't you use your intellect for God? If God's given you the gift of anything, use that for God. My dear friends, time's short. People need to see that Jesus is coming, that He's real, that He's real in your life, and that He'll make a difference in their lives. Oh, are you persuaded of the things of God? If not, today would be a good day to give your heart to Jesus and leave out of here different than you came in. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. Let's all stand. I'm persuaded of some things. I'm like the Apostle Paul. There are just some things I'm persuaded of. Amen. Say, preacher, I'm saved. Wonderful. What kind of servant are you? You ought to come and ask God to help you. If you're here today and you're not saved, you ought to come. We'll take a Bible and show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. You can leave out of here rejoicing, knowing that your sins have been forgiven. What a blessing to be free from your sin. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do love you. Lord, it's gotten a little stuffy in here as the sun's come out. People are a little uncomfortable. I wonder how uncomfortable people are in hell today, Lord. God, I pray if there's anyone under the sound of our voice that doesn't know Jesus, I pray the sweet Holy Spirit would convict them of their sin, but show them how much Jesus loved them, that He died for them, that He'll save them if they'll come, put their faith in the finished works of Calvary and in the Savior. They're willing to repent of their sins and trust Christ, He'll save them. Then, God, I pray for your children. Lord, I realize your children aren't living wickedly. Lord, are they doing their best for Christ? God bless. Speak to hearts. Lord, help folks be obedient. Just mind the Lord. God, we'll thank you for what you accomplished. For it's in the wonderful things of Jesus. wonderful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.